What is going on my babies? Welcome to another YouTube video. Uh, this is gonna be a highly informative one, so sit down, relax, and enjoy. Today we're gonna be talking about calves and how to grow them, and I'm gonna be dissecting the most recent literature so I can give you the best unbiased advice about how to grow your calves. In this video, we'll be going over the anatomy of the calf muscle complex, a little bit of biomechanics to help you with technique, and finally, my favorite exercise to target the calves and recommendations on how you can incorporate them into your workouts. If you're ready to get started, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below with any questions that you might have after watching. If you missed part one, please head to, over to my Instagram page at Steffi Cohen to watch the short video and answer a quiz for your chance to win some sick hybrid apparel. Let's start by looking at the anatomy of the calf muscle complex or triceps surrey. The calf muscle complex is composed of two main muscles. You have your gastrocnemius and the soleus. About 80 to 90 percent of us have also a third muscle known as the plantaris, but since the plantaris is believed to be largely vestigial from a functional standpoint, it is often lumped in with the gastrocnemius. The gastroc clearly steals the show as it creates the coveted diamond sweep in the lower leg that is the envy of millions. A well-developed gastrocnemius says to the world, hey, I've been blessed by the calf muscle gods with good genetics and I'm probably at least a little bit fit too. This is a two joint muscle that spans both the knee and the ankle joint with its medial and lateral heads originating at the posterior aspects of the distal femur. It then coalesces with the soleus inferiorly to insert at the calcaneus or the heel bone via the Achilles tendon. Due to its high density of fast twitch fibers, we depend on the gastroc for rapid, powerful contractions for explosive ankle plantar flexion, such as when we sprint or jump. Since it originates above the knee, it works with the hamstrings to flex and stabilize the knee joint as well. Next, we have the soleus. Deep to the gastroc is the less glamorous soleus muscle. And although you rarely hear about someone wanting to get a jacked soleus, it does play an important role in our ankle function. Unlike the gastroc, the soleus muscle fibers are largely slow twitch between 70 and 96%, making it more of a postural muscle uh, that is resistant to fatigue. This design is perfect for activities that require more plantar flexion endurance, such as the cases of walking or jogging. As you can see, even though the gastroc and the soleus muscle lie very intimately with each other, they are vastly different in their qualities and characteristic. It's almost like the gastroc is the flashy superhero who gets all of the credit and the soleus is his trust ever dependable but less celebrated sidekick. Now let's go full nerd and discuss the functions of these muscles by reviewing the biomechanics of the motion we will be hammering today, which is ankle plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is the action of raising your heels off the ground or pressing a gas pedal. When we do a standing heel race, we create a rare mechanical occurrence in the human body, a second class lever. As with all second class levers, ankle plantar flexion occurs with a load in the middle of the system. In case of a heel race, the load is our body weight. The effort or force vector shown here at the insertion of the calf muscle complex is on the other side of the load, shown here at the first metacarbophalangeal joint, aka the ball of your foot. Imagine you're picking up a wheelbarrow full of bricks. That same mechanism is what's happening within your ankle and foot as you lift your heels off the ground. Don't worry, the physics lingo is almost over, so please stay with me. If you have ever felt the burn of a calf race in your foot, muscles rather than in your calf muscles, this could be a sign that you aren't properly utilizing your second class lever. If you find this to be a barrier as you try out today's exercise, drop the weight a little bit or try some toe extension stretches. All right, let's train the calves. <laughs> Set up. Since we want to maximize mechanical tension throughout the entire plantar flexion range of motion available to us, the exercises we're gonna do today will all be demonstrated with the toes elevated above the heels. We can do this by placing the forefoot on a raised surface like a block, a sandboard, or a weight plate. This allows the heel to drop past neutral at the bottom of the movement and provide extra stretch to the muscle fibers. Technique. 
let's go through it. If you've been training a calf for years to no avail, I encourage you to revisit your technique. Pausing at the bottom and top of the movement and focusing on a slow eccentric phase to maximize tension on the calf muscle complex is key. Hastily pumping through your heel raises will not serve you well in the long run, so keep that in mind. Now let's talk about rep schemes. Think back to what we learned about the calf muscles in my first video first. While the gas drug thrives in an explosive fast switch environment, the soleus usually enjoys slower twitch endurance settings. This concept could be reflected in your rep schemes in that the soleus may handle higher rep ranges with lower loads and the gas drug may, handle, may better handle lower rep ranges but with higher loads. Since everyone has their own individual strengths and limitations, I'd recommend that you start with a range of 8 to 12 reps and listen to what the muscle is telling you to determine when to increase the reps and when to add resistance. When we reach the point of technical failure and can no longer isolate the calf muscles without compensation at the foot or knee, you've found your sweet spot. Now let's talk about sets. As in most cases of muscle hypertrophy, what we wanna do is we wanna maximize our accumulation of volume. Usually that means anywhere from three to six sets of an exercise per training session, depending on your training history. So start with fewer and gradually increase your sets over several weeks. If you wake up the day after training uh, calves and can't put your foot flat on the ground without intense soreness, you've probably done too much. So scale it back a little so you can perform a calf workout two to four times per week. Keep in mind that this is not a metabolic conditioning workout. We don't want to rust or rest intervals at the expense of not being able to achieve our volume goals in the subsequent sets. 60 to 90 seconds of rest is pretty much a good place to start to allow your calves to recover before starting the next set without leaving reps on the table at the end of your workout. Now let's get deep into the exercises. Now it's important that we don't neglect the soleus muscle group. A lot of people tend to perform the bulk of their calf training standing up, but if we really uh, mix both sitting and standing exercises, we can really maximize the shape of our calves. Since the soleus only crosses the ankle joint, it is a single joint muscle. This has led to the tradition of the soleus exercises being performed with a knee bent in order to decrease tension on the gas drug and more effectively bias the soleus, a concept known as active insufficiency. I do want to point out that research has shown that the soleus and gas drug don't simply turn on and off because the knee is bent or straight. So even if you are doing calf exercises with the knee extended, the soleus is still helping out a little bit. For the seated heel raise, find a piece of selectorized equipment dedicated to this movement. But you can also set yourself up with a couple of dumbbells. Just place your forefeet on a block or plate and rest the dumbbells on your knees. Press through the balls of your feet to raise the heels off the ground, hold at the top, then slowly return to the starting position. If you're looking for something a little bit spicier that involves more than just the calf muscles, do the same exercise in a squat position. You can use a rig to help you balance. Squat down to parallel and hold an isometric squat as you raise the heels off the ground. Soleus exercise number two is a single leg strength drill. When you are standing on one leg, the muscle that crosses the ankles have to contract to keep the joint stable and the soleus is no different. When the knee travels forward over the toes, the soleus eccentrically contracts to ensure that the knee translates anteriorly with control. As you can come back up to standing, the soleus concentrically contracts to bring the tibia back to vertical. So when you are doing a compound single leg strength movement, like the skater squat, pistol squat, Bulgarian split squats, and single leg deadlifts, your soleus is hard at work as it helps you maintain your balance. Soleus exercise number three, walk it out. Unlike its counterpart, the soleus muscle is a postural muscle with a higher proportion of type 1 fibers, meaning that it's great for lower intensity, longer duration activities that require muscle endurance. That's why simply going out for a jog or run can gas up the soleus. So slap on your Fitbit and get those steps in. Now that we're done with that, let's talk about the gas truck. With exercise number one, the standing heel raise. Take balance out of the equation by using one hand or a bench or a rig instead of doing the heel races you've been doing for years. Switch it up and target each head of the gastronemias by adjusting your toe position. Turning the toes out during a heel race may increase muscle activity in the medial head of the gastroc. Bilateral toes in heel race, on the other hand, 
Turning the toes in or going pigeon toed can bias the lateral head of the gastro. After doing one set of each toes out, toes in, finish it off with a burn off set of neutral heel races, which presumably activates both gastro heads nearly equally. The recent evidence behind toes out versus toes in has been contradictory on this topic, meaning that changing foot position does not consistently lead to increased muscle activity in the corresponding muscle heads in the research. However, I encourage you to try it out and see how it feels for you. Let's go on to gastroc exercise number two, the donkey heel race. This is usually performed in a hip hinge position with the upper body supported, which further takes balance out of the equation. It's a pretty old school bodybuilding exercise that isn't commonly utilized anymore. This lift could be very useful for people with stubborn calves, especially those who tend to feel their foot muscles fatiguing during the heel races by helping them hone in on the fulcrum point at the ball of the foot and increase great toe extension due to the forward shift of center of mass. If you don't have a donkey heel race machine at your disposal, get creative in setting up this exercise. Gastric exercise number three, single leg heel race. Performing a single leg heel race is a great way to progress the exercise while facilitating symmetrical strength and size. If performing a typical unilateral heel race is too much of a challenge for you at this point, and you're unable to feel a strong contraction in the targeted calf region, try some of these progress regressions. Example number one, eccentric single leg heel race. Perform a double heel race on a standing surface and pause at the top. Shift all your weight to one leg and allow the ankle to slowly lower to the starting position. Pause at the bottom, then reposition the opposite leg of the helping leg to repeat the motion. Gastroc exercise number four, jumping and sprinting. Remember how the gastrocnemius has slightly more fast twitch type two fibers than the soleus? By incorporating high velocity, higher intensity movements like double and single leg plyometric drills and sprints, the gastroc muscles gets a chance to show off its explosiveness or lack thereof for those of you who have been neglecting this type of training. It's important to ease into plyometrics and sprinting to avoid overuse injuries. Start off nice and easy one or two times per week with drills like jumping rope and broad jumps or sprints. Do you have to do every single one of these exercises? Of course not. Pick three or four of your favorites that help you feel a true calf muscle contraction and add them to your workout routine as suggested earlier in the video. If plyometric and sprint training isn't up your alley, then don't worry. You've got plenty of options to choose from to find what exercises work best for you. Here's my last pearl of wisdom. Be patient. Muscle building takes time, takes weeks, months, even years to build. So prioritize technique while progressive overloading these movements and find a way to track your progress over time. Use a tape measure so that you can appreciate every inch and centimeter of hard work mass that you've gained so you can keep pushing forward with determination. Remember, you're in this for the long haul. So no more hashtag team no calves. I hope you guys found my definitive guide to growing your calves helpful. Our hybrid education team is dedicated to providing you with high quality, evidence-based approaches to training and nutrition. So give us a like below if you like more content like this. Please head over to hybridperformancemethod.com and snag a training and nutrition program for all your training and nutrition needs. And after you've done that and you wanna look extra good when you're going to the gym to do exercise, then you've, you, you better go to hybridapparel.store to snag the sickest apparel in the game so that not only you, you look good while you're training, but also people can tell that you know what you're doing because of what you're wearing, because that's, that's what, I, what it means. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace, bye. Oh man, he looks, Dexter, you look really great. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>